All right, guys, it's Charlie Tango 1994 back with another YouTube video. Whilst on lockdown because of COVID 19, I've had the chance to tidy up and reorganize my radio shack. And in the last few videos, I've dug out all of my radio equipment, set up my sideband radio, and checked it for SWR on the Venom Halfwave I've got up on the roof. So things are now all set up to start getting some signals in and start enjoying the radio during this imposed time at home. But as I mentioned in my previous video, and like lots of people with a home base setup, I have a real problem with the noise floor I get on my radio equipment at home. Known as QRM, the problem is often caused by electrical equipment which is emitting interference across a number of bands used by radio equipment and prevents genuine radio signals from being heard above the noise of the interference. I noticed yesterday that the noise level on my radio was particularly bad so I grabbed some quick footage of how it was affecting the radio and tried to identify the strength of the QRM across the various frequencies I'd like to be able to use from home. Starting off on the UK block in FM, you can see on channel 22 with the RF gain right down, there is no QRM at all. But moving to channel 23, with the RF gain in the same position, we're getting five to seven pounds of noise. And with the RF gain up full, it increases to 30 plus. Moving to channel 24, with the RF gain down again, it sounds even worse, with about five pounds of noise. Switching to sideband and trying the triple five, no signals are readable, and we're getting a consistent 10 pound of noise. You might have heard of the 305 net, made popular by two well-known CBA YouTubers, Steve Stevens and Fred in the Shed, this takes place at 4pm every day and was started a good five or more years ago as this was when Steve was on his way home from work every day. Well, since it's on when I'm normally at work, I've only once been able to be at home for it and since it's in my part of the country, I'd love to put a call into the 305 net. But here, even though the signal meter is flat, you can still hear the repetitive whoosh of QRM on the frequency and with the RF gain up, it's showing about £10. Whilst filming, we then started to get all sorts of pops and crackles across the frequency. Switching back to the triple five, it was the same kind of thing, with those pops and crackles all over the frequency. So having checked a few different frequencies, I decided to try all channels on the FM UK block to see which frequencies were being worst affected. Spending just a few seconds on each channel, you can see I'm only getting a few pound of noise on most channels, which is pretty normal. But as I got about halfway across the band, you can hear the sound of the static start to change, and I was surprised to hear a local breaker coming in on channel 26. I went all the way up to channel 40, then flicked back to listen to the signal coming in on the 26. Interesting that he's talking about the QRM problems he's getting from home, but there's still a lot of pops and noise coming over with the signal, which makes it harder to read. The good news is that after watching a few videos about QRM and with the helpful instructions of 104's recent video about the same problem, I've managed to make things a whole lot better. Starting off, I pulled out my Eurosonic handheld, which is handy because it has a little S meter on it stuck a rubber duck aerial on it and stuffed it full of batteries and went wandering around the house flicking through the channels going from room to room checking the S meter. Nothing major found. 
I had a wander around outside too because I wanted to check if anything was coming from the neighbours as well. Still nothing significant found. I went back to the radio in the shack and followed what 104 advised, which was to run the radio from battery to test, which I was able to do using the car jumper pack I use when running portable. Flicking back to the 26, the same breaker was still on, and as you can tell, he sounds a lot clearer, so it looks like I must be getting QRM from something plugged into the garage. So you might not have a handheld available, nor a spare battery pack to connect your radio to, so here's what else 104 advises. Find your fuse box, which protects the different electrical rings in your house. Handily, mine is here in the corner of the garage. Preferably when there's no one else in the house, one by one flick the reset switch on each ring, which will shut down power to specific parts of the house. Each time, go back to the radio and check the receive for any changes to your own noise level. Keep doing this until you see an improvement in your noise floor. When you do, work out which fuse you flick last and what part of the house it affects. Power everything back up and head to the part of the house you identified, then try and identify which piece of electrical equipment in that room could be creating the problem. Main culprits 104 informs us are TVs left on standby, Ethernet over power adapters, LED light strips and USB adapters like these, particularly cheap Chinese ones. Try turning off each of these in turn, then returning to your radio to check for any improvements. Hopefully this will help you identify where the noise is coming from and your QRM problems will be solved. In my case, I had to disconnect everything that was plugged into power strips in the garage and it turned out to be a power adapter on one of the portable speakers I keep in the garage. Once that was disconnected, the noise level virtually disappeared. Going back to the radio that afternoon, I tried a few different frequencies and since there was a bit of an opening on the bands, I started to get a lot of stations coming in from across Italy. Signals were popping in from all over the place which I've not had for a long time. Hoping to catch the end of the 305 net that afternoon, I tuned up to that frequency. No sign of Fred in the shed and his mates, but there were still more Italian stations coming in on this frequency. Never mind Fred, I'll have to find another day to give you a shout and get a signal report from where I am in the borders of North London. So, thanks to 104 and a few others who put up videos about this problem, and I hope this information helps you solve your home base problems too. If, like Dave, Moogie, it doesn't, and you're a license holder like him, you may need to contact Ofcom like he had to, when he had the same problem caused by a neighbour with a shonky TV booster they had in their loft space. So with that problem sorted, I hope to get more update videos on YouTube this summer of some fine signals coming into my new improved radio shack. Until then, I'll see you in my next YouTube video. Cheers guys.